At least seven individuals have been arrested during Adbusters' ongoing Occupy Wall Street protest, one for wearing the V-mask used by Hacker Collective, Anonymous. According to Bloomberg, four protesters were arrested Monday for wearing masks. New York law forbids more than two individuals wearing masks in a public space at any one time during a protest. The fifth protester was reportedly arrested for jumping a police barrier, while the sixth and seventh were detained for attempting to enter a building used by Bank of America Corporation while wearing masks. Officials say that the U.S. is assembling secret drone bases in Africa, Arabian Peninsula. The Obama administration is assembling a constellation of secret drone bases for counterterrorism operations in the Horn of Africa and the Arabian Peninsula as part of a newly aggressive campaign to attack Al-Qaeda. That should be written ALCIADA instead because we hear a get in it for truth know full well that ALCIADA, it is part of the globalists massive military industrial complex with a habit for false flag operations. Meanwhile, from Al Jazeera. The Horn of Africa drought and millions face famine in Somalia. The United Nations has declared a state of famine in some parts of southern Somalia where there exists one of the worst droughts in over half a century. An estimated 3.7 million people, or more than one third of Somalia's population, is in need of emergency aid. Here's an interesting article by Jonathan C. Darsky about OnStar spying on customers GPS location for profit. He writes, so the GPS location of your vehicle and your vehicle speed are likely going to be collected by OnStar and sold to third parties. What kind of companies are interested in this data? OnStar would have you believe that respectable agencies, like departments of transportation and various law enforcement agencies. I can imagine this data could be used for good to create traffic-based analytics to improve future road construction or even emergency response. But given that those types of decisions are only made once a decade in most cities, OnStar isn't likely to benefit much financially from respectable companies. From the Washington Post. A future for drones and automated killing. A demonstration laid the groundwork for scientific advances that would allow drones to search for a human target and then make an identification based on facial recognition or other software. Once a match was made, a drone could launch a missile to kill the target. Tropical Storm Ophelia forms in Central Atlantic. At 10 p.m., the center of Tropical Storm Ophelia was located near latitude 12.2 north, longitude 40.1 west. Ophelia is moving toward the west near 9 miles per hour, and this general motion is expected to continue for the next 48 hours with an increase in forward speed. Maximum sustained winds are near 40 mph, with higher gusts. Some gradual strengthening is forecast during the next day or so. Three days after a devastating earthquake measuring a forceful 6.8 on the Richter scale struck a large parts of northeast India. Rescue and relief teams are still trying to reach thousands of people trapped in remote areas. Many villages in Quake at Sikkim are still out of reach and thousands are said to be waiting for help. Rescue operations remain the biggest challenge as rain and landslides are severely hampering the efforts and bad weather is not allowing helicopters to land. Please do some research and discover a way, if you can, to help as much as possible in these trying times. A Dutch artist has blended spider silk with human skin to produce a super strong material that can stop a bullet at half its regular speed. Jalila Asadi collaborated with cell biologist Abdelwab El Khalzawari to produce the material which is three times tougher than Kevlar. A corporate report on the Canada-US border deal that threatens sovereignty. A proposed cross-border deal between Canada and the US is expected to be unveiled in the coming weeks. The Canadian government admits that the agreement includes plans to share security-related information, but says it is consulting with the Privacy Commissioner to ensure that Canadian interests are protected and promoted. The government's assurances come on the heels of weeks of reports that Canadian sovereignty is being increasingly eroded at the U.S. border. Another illegal kitchen garden. Stand in solidarity with Adam Guerrero. 
a math teacher at Raleigh Egypt High School in Memphis, Tennessee, whom, along with three students, became lawbreakers after they continued to tend to a garden after it was deemed a neighborhood nuisance. Adam has been ordered to remove the garden before his court date on September 23rd. He has been avoiding this until now given the all the efforts that went into it but time is running out. Please act today. Write to Judge Larry Potter. Sign the petition. 12.10 a.m. Eastern, September 20th. Breaking news on Typhoon Rookie, via the Daily Yomiri Twitter feed. The Post states, Nagoya, Japan. Lifts evacuation advisory for about 880,000 residents as river levels fall. Scientists at the University of Plymouth have shown, for the first time in an animal, that nanoparticles have a detrimental effect on the brain and other parts of the central nervous system. They subjected rainbow trot to titanium oxide nanoparticles which are widely used as a whitening agent in many products including paints, some personal care products and with applications being considered for the food industry. They found that the particles caused vacuoles to form in parts of the brain and for nerve cells in the brain to die. Although some effects of nanoparticles had been shown previously in cell cultures and other in vitro systems this is the first time it has been confirmed in a live vertebrate. September 21st at 1.19 am Eastern, breaking news after the quake in Sikkim reports that the Indian Army rescued 45 tourists from Lechung, and no one was injured. A volcano on Alaska's remote Aleutians, Mrs. Lava. The Alaska Volcano Observatory reports Tuesday that Cleveland volcano is erupting with the effusion of lava within the summit crater at the uninhabited island about 940 miles southwest of Anchorage. Satellite data last week showed a thermal anomaly, indicating the lava dome was growing. Hackers break SSL encryption used by millions of sites. Researchers have discovered a serious weakness in virtually all websites protected by the Secure Sockets layer protocol that allows attackers to silently decrypt data that's passing between a web server and an end-user browser. Researchers Tai Duong and Giuliano Rizzo plan to demonstrate proof-of-concept code called BEAST, which is short for Browser Exploit Against SSL slash TLS. The stealthy piece of JavaScript works with a network sniffer to decrypt encrypted cookies a targeted website uses to grant access to restricted user accounts. Okay, friends. Don't be fooled. Hackers are think tank, government funded operations unless they are us, we the people, and we the people are still asleep, or concerned with protecting our rights whilst funded hackers, they play false flags to help enact more draconian legislation. Be careful. And you have to dig extra deep to decipher these hacker agendas. West Sumatra Volcano, Mount Merapi has been spewing black smoke and volcanic dust since Wednesday morning. Residents living near the mountain said the smoke coming out of the volcano on Wednesday was much thicker than usual. As of Tuesday, the volcanic dust had reached heights of up to 200 meters into the atmosphere and had spread across several districts and municipalities in West Sumatra. Gerard Batten, of Europe of Freedom and Democracy, speaks at European Parliament Strasbourg, September 12, 2011, about media collusion. The Bilderberg Group and Hidden Agendas. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, the Commission have recently replied to my written questions, confirming that Commissioners Almunia and Crows attended the Bilderberg meeting in St. Moritz in June. The Commission cannot tell me details of what was discussed, but assure me that the Bilderberg meetings do not take decisions. If Bilderberg meetings are just talking shops, why do the most important and powerful figures from around the world, including George Osborne, the Chancellor of the Exchequer, bother to attend? And what other summit of world leaders in politics, finance and business would go completely unreported in the mainstream media, such as the BBC? It is impossible not to reach the conclusion that the non-reporting of these events is anything other than a conspiracy between the organisers and the media. It merely confirms the belief of many that the hidden agenda and purpose of the Bilderberg Group is to bring about undemocratic world government. It's a disgrace that the European Commission is colluding in that.